If you're anything like me, you've dreamed of hurling a rally car around a gravel road a bit like Ken Block. Of course, there are a number of reasons why that dream may seem impossible. For starters, you probably don't have a Fiesta World Rally car worth half a million dollars in your garage. But let's not allow this minor detail to discourage you any longer. See, I'm here in Houghton, Michigan, which at this time of year, with all the four colors, is truly stunning. And, according to this sign, the birthplace of professional hockey. But I'm more interested in this part, to compete in a Rally America event, where I can show you how you can practically and legally scream through those same tree-lined gravel roads as Mr. Jim Carner himself, and not break the bank while doing so. Rallying. It's a bit like dancing on the gravel, which may sound a bit odd, but when you watch a driver that knows what they're doing, it's effortless and incredibly graceful. Here, it's man versus machine, versus the darkness, versus the rain, the snow, the danger. This is the most evocative form of motorsport in the world. Jumping sideways, splashing through the water. The noise, the speed, the precision. Morphing from fan to driver may seem like an impossible dream, but this, this could be you. For less money than you might think. This is a 2009 Honda Fit. Okay, so perhaps it doesn't look as aggressive as you were hoping, but stay with me. Right now, you can probably find a decent used fit in your area for about 10 grand. And what might surprise you is how much of this car you can simply leave alone. The only bits you actually have to address are things like the addition of a roll cage, rally suspension, a racing steering wheel, gravel tires, and if you're really keen, welding up the differential. And making those minor tweaks should cost just eight grand, which in racing terms is the bargain of the century. Yes, this front wheel drive rally dominator still has the production five-speed manual gearbox. And yes, it still has that same stock 1.5 litre engine that boasts, and I assure you this is on a typo, 117 horsepower. Sure, that won't get you in the same class as Mr. Block, but it will get you in the same race and in a highly competitive car in its class. Point being, it's cheap, safe, accessible fun. And you or I can enter into a high profile Rally America event such as I'm doing here at the Lake Superior Performance Rally. But I do have a little secret. In all my years of racing, I have never attempted rallying and I genuinely have no idea what to expect. One man that does, however, is this guy, James Guitar, my co-driver, the man responsible for reading pace notes and generally keeping me out of trouble. Uh, what advice do you have for me coming into this? My first time rallying. <laughs> Uh, it's a little slippery today, so let's just keep it on the road. It's advice from a professional right there. All right, <laughs> let's go and give it a go. And then the clouds rolled in, and the heavens opened, perhaps in fear of the mighty fit. We were off, and as we approached the first corner, I noticed a couple of things right away. One, the buttery smooth ride, and then just how little grip wet, muddy gravel actually has. It took all my concentration, but soon after, we arrived back for a 30-minute service. Typically, each rally features one or two service stops a day, allowing the mechanics an opportunity to fix any issues with the car and give the drivers a chance to stretch their legs. As the guys quickly found out, I'd been taking it nice and easy on the first couple of stages, but that didn't stop them from being thorough. Soon, it was time to buckle up and get more serious. Eight gruelling stages lay ahead. This time, I approached the corners with a bit more gusto. Uh, perhaps too much gusto. Understeer is known as a sin in rallying, and given I hadn't worked out the technique for getting this front-wheel drive machine to slide correctly, I was laying down sins all over the forest. But, as I found out a few miles later, I wasn't the only one struggling. The last thing I needed at this point was total darkness, but alas, that's what happened. And once again, I performed another massive sin. This time, it was a bit more costly. I climbed out and stood up to my shins in ice-cold, muddy water to warn others of my utter incompetence. After about 10 minutes of misery, a fellow racer sacrificed his stage time to help rescue us. 
This is rallying. It's one big community where everyone helps each other out. My co-driver, clearly very moved by the generosity of our rivals, wanted to savour the moments as he strapped back in the car. All right, go. As the night wore on, exhaustion plagued us all. Everyone was spinning, many needing a tow. This rally had become a race of attrition. We're back after day one. 10 stages done, the car filthy, but in one piece, shiny side up. It's now 12.30, I am exhausted, but actually feeling surprisingly upbeat. We've still got an hour and a half transit back to the hotel, so it's gonna be late. This is rallying. First experience, it's pretty mega. We'll see you in the morning. After four hours sleep, we woke up to some welcome sunshine. At the start of the second day, the final six stages of the rally, my time spent in a ditch the day before left us trailing the leader in our class by a couple of minutes. But our stage times had proved that if I could just keep it on the road, we'd have a good chance of victory. Still, I had to be on my game. And luckily, I remembered to pack my game face. With conditions having improved and a day of experience under my belt, we were clawing back time with every stage. I was more comfortable in the car, making fewer mistakes and generally feeling a bit more like a rally driver. Back at service, the times came in. We were now in the lead by three minutes and we were pulling away by over a minute per stage. All we had to do now was keep it clean. After a change of brake pads and a small tyre pressure adjustment, we went back out for the final three stages. With every mile, I felt more at home. I was pushing harder, driving faster, but yet still never risking the car. I was also glad we reduced our tyre pressures because the night's rainfall had completely washed out some of the stages. That's our teammate stuck there in the Honda Civic. It took them over an hour to get towed back out. I was still learning, but I was finally getting the hang of turning the car with my feet, using left foot braking to pin the front end down mid-corner and getting it to rotate. This meant no more sinning, and from behind the wheel, it felt fantastic. On camera, it might not look like Ken Block, but you have to remember, we're in a 2009 Honda Fit that is as close to production as you can possibly get. Sure, it doesn't drift like an all-wheel drive car, but in many ways, proper technique is actually more important to drive a front-wheel drive car fast, as you simply can't just stand on the gas to get it to slide. It is incredibly challenging, but the most rewarding form of driving I've ever done. I promise you, doing 80 mile per hour on a muddy path with trees either side feels as fast as hell. As we approached the red finish sign to conclude the rally, I held it wide open one final time, and then it was over, just as I was getting the hang of it. But what an event. Honestly, this was the most fun weekend I've ever had racing, and something I've dreamed about doing since I was five years old. And in first place for Beast Beck, in the Honda Fit for Honda Racing, we have Alex Lloyd and James Guitar. Woo! It's been just a magnificent weekend for us. What an exciting experience. I can't say how much I want to come back to a Rally America event and do this all over again. Brilliant.